So hydration timing and, excuse me, hydration and nutrient timing that we're going to cover today is relevant to workouts or exercise or sports nutrition. So I'm not talking about in general or healthy eating tips. That's another topic. Uh, so today we're just going to look at it with the perspective that now you are an active individual. You work out regularly and vigorously. So what sh should you be taking care of in terms of your hydration and nutrients or diet, okay? So I'm gonna share the screen. Um, share my screen. This is page four from the lecture notes, okay? Or lecture three. Uh, hydration and nutrient timing and it's pages 53 to 53. I tried to, my cat is, I'm not a cat. Um, so I tried to summarize this and I would like you to get an idea when we're done with this lecture about what you should be doing. Why hydration is so important. First, it, it is considered to be, in the literature, it is considered to be the most important nutrient. Even though it doesn't have nutrients in it, it is just water, uh, we still look at it as the most important nutrient because water is used in every single cell activity. If there is not enough water in your system cellularly, then your cellular functions won't uh, be proper. Okay, so 50 to 60 percent of body mass is water. Okay. We should understand that when you go on the scale and weigh yourself, that's the majority of, of it comes from water. So if you have some water retention for one reason or another, okay, bloated or your weight ends up being higher than what it is normally. Um, so it performs many functions, like I said. Uh, it delivers the nutrients and whatever you, your body needs to the cells and then takes away the waste products and gets rid of them through your sweat and your um, uh, urination. So it also regulates your body temperature, which is a very important vital thing for your body. If your body temperature's temperature is out of normal range, you will die. Okay, that's a given fact. If it is too cold, if it is too hot, it has to be maintained at a certain uh, level. And water uh, acts like a cool coolant, especially when your temperature goes up. Since this is all really relevant to exercising or working out, our body temperature will, will rise. So you're going to use water to cool off that extra body temperature. So failure to drink water will... Uh, result in a poor exercise performance and possibility of dehydration. Okay, dehydration is not just a word that we just take it for granted. It is a serious condition and the uh, consequences of dehydration may last more than a couple of days, sometimes a couple of weeks. So we don't want to get to the point of being dehydrated. That's why we want to replenish that lost water through our sweat during exercise constantly. Even during the day, even when you don't exercise, especially during these hot uh, temperature days, we have to keep sipping on our water because there's a reason for it. I'll get to it in the end. So when it comes to workouts, we have to be hydrated enough before we begin exercising. So prior to exercise, we have to make sure with that four hour uh, window, we have to be ingesting two, two glasses of water, okay, prior to exercise. What happens during exercise? It depends on what you do, okay? Yes, we have to keep replenishing the water being lost through the workout, but if it is, especially if it's an endurance exercise, Let's say you're running for more than an hour, okay? Or you're uh, walking for more than an hour or cycling. It's an endurance 
that means endurance exercise means it is last prolonged exercise. It is going to last long and uh, fairly a moderate intensity, not as vigorous. Uh, but you are going to lose a lot of water during that endurance exercise, as well as your electrolytes, okay? Uh, and also some uh, carbohydrate storages. And when your carbohydrate levels go um, lower than um, a, a certain amount, your performance will drop. That's why we have to replenish carbohydrates as well. But this is only for endurance exercises that last more than an hour, okay? So when we look at a typical uh, drink, okay, exercise drink or workout drink, they should have 8% or less carbohydrates in them, okay? Just water mixed up with some sort of sugar, okay? Carbohydrate is basically sugar. And we tend to choose the basic or simple carbohydrates so that it gets ingested right away and can be used right away in our blood. So a typical workout drink like a Gatorade or Powerade they should have less than 8% of carbohydrates in them, okay? So when you go out and buy a Gatorade, you should be just drinking it, not during the day, like it's a beverage, um, during your endurance exercise that lasts more than an hour. If you're lifting weights vigorously and it, that bout of exercise lasts more than an hour, then you might consider drinking Gatorade. After exercise, yeah, these are the guidelines. Of course, this is really hard to gauge how much weight you lost through your workout, but this is the general guideline. If you lost through sweating, okay, you're, that's not a real fat loss or weight loss, but it's just the water loss. If you lost one kilogram, which is about two pounds, 2.2 pounds, uh, body lo weight loss, you should be drinking 1.5 liters. It's like a point and a half times the weight loss. So you can just convert that into a pound. But let's get to this. Um, so just keep drinking water. That's the main idea. But why do we keep sipping on water constantly? This is a fact, scientific fact. You know, our body is like a miraculous machine and there's a feedback mechanism that keeps us alive, okay? When something goes low, your body has this uh, protection mechanism or signaling system to your brain or central nervous system saying, you know, oh, okay, this hormone is too low or this nutrient is too low. You got to do something and then we do end up doing something about it. When it comes to hydration though, that is, has been found to be the least efficient feedback mechanism in our body. So you, your brain, you will be deceiving your brain by sipping, even touching your lips to the water. And your brain will think that you're all taken care of in terms of hydration. You won't feel thirsty. If you already feel thirsty, by the way, it is a border of being dehydrated. So you should not wait until you feel thirsty. You should be, you know, sipping off of your water bottle constantly. But even one or two sips will fool your brain thinking that you just got the hydration you need. But that's not the case. So that's the least efficient. Uh, it's a, a negative feedback mechanism. That's what we call. Um, to push you or stimulate you or warn you to drink more water, but that doesn't work that efficiently in our system. That's why you have to make a conscious effort to constantly drink your water. Any questions about hydration? Don't forget that. Okay, so Isabella was asking about uh, the nutrient, like how should we uh, manage our diet so we have the best results. We, sh we sure see the results of our labor. Okay, so that's what we're going to, when to eat, what to eat. Again, 
when it comes to working out, not general. So one thing I want you to understand about this before we begin the nutrient timing, the gains from whatever you're trying to do with your workout, all the gains happen not during the workout, during recovery, okay? So between your sessions is when you get the gains, when you earn your points, if you will, okay? If it's your, it depends on your goal. If it's your cardiovascular capacity uh, boost, that's when you're going to see it when you are recovering from the workout that you just did. Or when you want to see muscle growth, same thing. That is why nutrient timing is very crucial to see the results, okay? So nutrient timing is very important to repair muscle tissue damage, which we're going to discuss in the DOMS, Delayed Onset of Muscle Soreness. By the way, who is feeling sore from the other day's workout? I am. My triceps are really sore. Uh, so during the recovery, we repaired the muscle tissue damage that we just created with our workout. We restore our physiological functions. We replenish the glycogen that we just used up from the workout or during the workout, which is sugar or the uh, storage, uh, uh, you know, uh, storage, stored sugar, if you will, glycogen, and promote muscle growth. So what should we do to maximize this benefit? Before the exercise, before we even begin, that's called a pre-workout. You know, there are powders that they sell and drinks that they sell. But mainly, this is what we should be uh, focusing on. You have to get enough glycogen in your system because muscle glycogen is the primary fuel used during exercise. That is a scientific fact. Your body will uh, spare the fat or will not prefer fat because fat is a slow energy resource. Even though it's abundant, it gets into uh, used energy in a very slow manner. That's why your muscle or your body will prefer using muscle glycogen when you're working out. That's why your glycogen stores need to be uh, replenished before you begin your workout so that you can get the most benefit out of it. Both aerobic and anaerobic exercise decrease glycogen stores. So prior to aerobic exercise, which is your running, your cycling, swimming, protein intake, combined with carbohydrate ingestion, okay, CHO is carbohydrate, it's going to stimulate the protein synthesis. What is synthesis? Protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is making up new protein or new protein tissue, which is your muscles. That's what you want, okay? Even, you know, whether it be... Um, repairing the muscle tissue or making up new muscle tissue, you need protein synthesis. So what they found with through research is that you have some protein intake combined with carbohydrates, that's the best way. Uh, if it, when it comes to resistance exercise, like our workouts, same thing. And they found out that it increases body capacity to do more sets, reps, and prolong a workout which is beneficial. So what is the recommended combination of this uh, or the uh, golden ratio, okay, of this protein to carbohydrate? So four units, whatever the units are, four units of carbohydrate to one unit of protein, okay? And those pre-workout drinks that you buy from the market, that's how they formulate their formulas, okay, four to one ratio, and you have to be ingesting this 30 minutes prior to exercise to make sure your stores are taken care of. Any questions? I heard something. Okay. Okay, so this is before. During exercise, 
like we talked about, if it's an endurance exercise, you want you should be replenishing your carbohydrates with a, a drink that also has electrolytes in them. But when it comes to nutrient, we don't really focus on during exercise because you're not really eating during exercise, except for a marathon, maybe you're eating a banana um, that you are served through the volunteers on the sidewalks and it's, it's awesome. I did that once and yeah, even that feels weird when you, you know, exercising, you're trying to put something in your body. That's why we have the, the drinks that have the carbohydrates. Anyways, so after exercise is called anabolic phase, okay? Uh, you might have heard this uh, term before, anabolic. Anabolic simply means making up new tissue or building new tissue, okay? Uh, those anabolic steroids that some athletes or bodybuilders use means, you know, they're making up new protein or muscle tissue. So this phase, you don't want to miss. Right after third, after a, wor uh, a workout in 30 to 45 minutes. So when you're done with the workout, within 30 to 45 minutes, you have the ability to boost or enhance your protein synthesis ability, your body's ability to do more protein synthesis if you take, you know, or, you know, get use or utilize this time period. Um, because th during this time, muscle cells are particularly sensitive to nutrient stimulation and hormones are working to repair the muscle that you just damaged and uh, the, the inflammation that you just created and also this time it promotes muscle growth. So your body is waiting to be fed. That, in other words, layman's term, okay, I just did the damage and I'm ready to be fed so that I can do the work for you in doing recovery. So recovery drinks, okay, that's what they call a post-workout drinks, they have to have some carbohydrates in them because again if you use carbohydrates and if you don't have carbohydrates you're not going to start that protein synthesis cycle efficiently so the recommendation again don't focus on the numbers too much but 50 grams carbohydrates and 10 to 15 grams protein with fluid again hydration soon after soon after means you know within 30 minutes um so it just happens it's a very interesting thing but they found again this is a research or scientific uh finding that they found that low fat chocolate mint you don't have to be rich or you don't have to go out and buy the post workout drinks you can just drink a, a box of a low fat chocolate milk which has the golden ratio in it Okay, they found that it's got that carbohydrate and protein that is recommended and uh, also some fat, uh, which is a good thing to, you know, um, to fuel the chemical processes. Okay, so that's one choice. Any questions? Good. Okay, so I'm just gonna, so this is the, um, let me just stop sharing and stop the recording.